boss. Now, I don't know if she's the very first female gangster rapper, but I couldn't think of anyone else. The only one that came to my mind was C-Note from the Bloods and Crips um, album, the Banging on Wax album. But I don't think she ever went solo. I don't think she ever put out a, uh, an album. So I looked up, you know, the first female gangster rapper and Boss came up. So the reason why I looked for her is because someone recommended I do a video of her. And I tried to look for articles about her life and all that. And I really couldn't find anything except for her Wikipedia. But, you know, it gives you pretty good details about her life. And um, it turns out that she wasn't really ever a criminal, whether a dope dealer or a gangbanger or anything like that. She was raised in the Midwest, like in a middle class family. You know, they, they weren't poor. They had money. They were OK. And I think they were like deacons. They were religious. They were like devout Christians. And she even herself went to Catholic school, was a cheerleader. She had a she had a decent life, you know. But then she moved to LA to uh, pursue a, a rap career. And just like a lot of people, man, you know, she got turned out into that gangster lifestyle, and she was living on the streets and doing all kind of stuff. You know that she didn't have to because even her parents didn't know about it pretty sure if they knew they would have like helped her out or went and got her or something but she kept it from them yeah and um sadly the last thing i saw on her wikipedia page is that she had a uh, kidney problems she needed surgery and she had a gofundme to get her that surgery so yeah um let's check out the wikipedia page go ahead and let me know what you think Boss is an American rapper from Detroit, Michigan. Her debut album, Born Gangstas, reached number three on Billboard's Top RB Slash Hip Hop Albums chart in 1993. Laws was born in Detroit to Joe Laws, an auto worker, and Lily, who took her master's degree in education and was a teacher at junior high and middle schools, formerly a teacher of business education at Lewis College of Business, Detroit. Her parents were both church deacons. She has two elder sisters. Laws relocated to Los Angeles after graduating high school. Accompanied by her DJ Irene D. Moore. She was spotted by DJ Quick who stuck her on a track with AMG. Russell Simmons liked the track and promptly signed her to Def Jam West. Her debut album Born Gangstas was released in 1993, and the singles, Deeper and Recipe for a Hoe, hit number one on the Billboard Hot Rap Tracks chart. In 1994, Laws was interviewed by a reporter from the Wall Street Journal, who revealed that she grew up in a middle-class neighborhood, on the west side, Detroit, studied ballet and piano, and attended Catholic private school, where she was a cheerleader, before majoring in business for two years at Oakland University. Laws had never attempted to disguise the truth of her upbringing. The intro of her 1993 album Born Gangstas, Intro, A Call from Mom, as her mother Lily described her as a young lady who was brought up through Catholic school for 12 years, and dance schools, tap dance, jazz, piano lessons, and all of that. Plus, you went to college for three years. The album is, in fact, bracketed with a mockery of her rearing, phone messages from Mama and Papa particularizing a privileged suburban upbringing, Catholic school, piano playing, tap dancing, belying the record's unyielding vulgarity and embroidered aggression with a brilliant, self-mocking disclaimer. Death Jeff, who produced the album and suggested the inclusion of Laws' parents, observed, quote, I can't believe none of the reviews saw the irony of that. No one did. Having left Detroit for Southside Los Angeles in 1990, Laws and Moore encountered its squalid side, derelict hotels, feudal gangs, dealing and hustling. Prior to securing a record deal, they lived in poor circumstances, selling drugs, sleeping on benches, and living in low-rent hotels. Her parents were unaware of the lifestyle she was leading. In the wake of her first album, Laws and Moore stopped working together, Laws noting, quote, 
We couldn't work together anymore, but we were still cool. Moore's Def Jam deal never came to anything. In the mid-1990s, Laws relocated to Texas to record songs with Ricardo Royal, also known as Coco Buda, a rapper whose work she had admired. Laws settled in Houston, they entered a relationship, and had a son, Lamar. Although living a more relaxed life, Laws recorded demos for a second album. Funded by Def Jam, but the label rejected them, and she was dropped from the label. Laws took this development in stride, noting, I was used to that kind of shit. I thought I was good enough to get another deal. But I just chilled in Texas. Then I got sick. Still performing shows despite waning popularity in light of her lack of new releases, Laws moved to Dallas with Royal, where she took a job as co-host of a nightly hip-hop radio show on KKDA-FM where she stayed for five years. Recalling in 2004, quote, that was a bomb job. By 1999, she was suffering kidney failure, she and Royal amicably split up, and she went to live with her parents, undergoing dialysis for three and a half years, experiencing, quote, every complication that you have with, bad kidneys, and given a poor prognosis. At times of comparatively better health, Laws recorded with Def Jeff, who praised her dedication, lack of self-pity, and resolve in the face of her health problems. In 2001, she collaborated with Crazy Bone on his album Thug on the Line. In 2004, she released a mixtape titled The Six Million Dollar Mixtape produced by Def Jeff. In 2004, Laws observed of her more recent work, quote, it's still hardcore. It's me. I've been through so much. I try to put a message in there, but it's not preachy shit. Death Jeff claimed to have, quote, shopped, laws, to almost every major and indie label and met with resistance. People are always asking about how she looks, what her age is, it's never about the music. I'll work with Boss when she's 45 years old. She gave me a new perspective on women. It was revealed in May 2011 that Laws was in need of a kidney due to her suffering from renal disease, a disease that rendered her kidneys useless for processing toxins in her body. Laws reached out to the Facebook community for a potential donor. A donor is yet to be found. In 2017, Laws suffered from a major stroke and seizure, and on the 31st of January 2021, a GoFundMe was set up to raise $15,000 for a recommended medical procedure. By February 17th, the NME reported it had reached $2,215. By March 3rd, it had surpassed the $15,000 goal, reaching $16,314. Counterfeiting is a billion dollar business perpetrated by thousands of people throughout the world. Meet Kimo, one of those people. Kimo is a young man from the most dangerous city in America. After losing his job, he ventures into the risky business of counterfeiting to help relocate his family to a better place. <laughs> 